say was that some people lately have been asking us about uh, the religious content of the mantra, you know, like what religion do they belong to and uh, what religion do they belong to. And uh, we've also found ourselves visiting countries where there's conflict, religious conflict, for instance, Israel and uh, and Kiev and Ukraine to a certain degree and, uh, uh, you know, whether the mantras um, uh, are in some way affiliated to, to some organization. You know what I mean? Do you want to say something about that? I mean, that's the beautiful thing that the mantras aren't. They are ancient sounds that have been discovered and then um, put in a structure that we can remember them and use them, but it, that's thousands of years ago before there were any religions. And only later Hinduism adopted those sounds and adopted the Sanskrit language and so now we relate the mantras to Hinduism. But really they are indigenous are almost like primordial sounds that speak to our very core, the center of our every cell. Yeah, yeah. They absolutely yeah. transcend any organization, religious or political, or even cultural. We've found out even uh, uh, that we play the mantras right all over the world, and the, the cultural boundaries just do not exist, you know. So that's what we wanted to say, that uh, the mantras, uh, like David said, you know, they work on a subliminal level, another dimension, and that's why they're healing mm -hmm. us, you know. <laughs>